This was definitely the darkest, most tragic, most hopeless feeling episode uh, to date so far in this great, great show. The Walking Dead, Season 4, Episode 14, The Grove. Wow. Just, uh, that's about all I can really think of. And, and this is, this is, after I've let everything settle the next, you know, the next morning. Oh my god. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Dead Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim here to bring you another review on the dark and the, the twisted and uh, sometimes very difficult for me at least to watch uh, a series of, of The Walking Dead. Uh, in last night's episode, I tell you, they, they've been, uh, since the, the mid-season finale, they've come back and, and each episode is focused on, you know, maybe one or two of these different groups and uh, you know, some people have been people have been real divided about it. Some people have loved it. Some people have hated it. Um, you know, angry that the plot didn't move forward in this one. Don't really care about character development. Just want to see zombies. Uh, I, I'm really in in neither of those camps. I really just enjoy it for what it is, which is uh, realistically, I mean, it's a it, it's a it's like a television soap opera on you know, but it but it it takes. It takes and puts a twist on it and says, like, how would people act towards one another after this apocalypse hit, you know? And uh, and some people are meant to, you know, to survive, and, and some people are just not fit for this world. And uh, But, man, I tell you, this this was the darkest, probably saddest episode. And it would have been even more, uh, more saddening, more sorrowful if they had uh, given more screen time to these, these two girls, uh, this... Uh, um, uh, to, to Mika and, uh, and and her sister Lizzie. And the last time we saw them, of course, was several episodes back uh, when they came upon Carol at the end of the episode. And we now know that Carol and Tyrese and, uh, and of course, Lizzie and Mika, and, and they have the baby Judith with them. And we know that they uh, found that sign determinus and were on their way there, or at least going there. And, and honestly, I had hoped that everybody would get there and then maybe something would happen. One or more of the kids would maybe get kidnapped or something like that. Uh, and that Rick would have to meet up with them there and, you know, that, that sort of thing. But, um, Wow. You know, everything winds up progressing, and although they don't really go much of anywhere in the episode, um, a lot of the big things are revealed, you know. We wind up finding out, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, because it was admitted uh, by her that Lizzie was the one that was actually feeding the rats uh, to the to the walkers through the fence in the prison. And not only did she admit it to Tyrese, but she also admitted, uh, you know, skinning and cutting up that one, just playing with it or whatever, down in the tombs that they found in the mid-season finale. And, uh... And we find out, we delve, in the 45 minutes that this episode is on, we kind of delve into the, the mind of uh, of two two innocent young children. And I have three kids myself, so this one was ex exceptionally difficult for me to watch. But you have uh, this post-apocalyptic world. The world ends, right? And all the rules and the things of society, all the things that have been taught in school, especially for young kids, it's got to be difficult to just throw that out the window and just say, okay, well, listen, you don't understand, you know, these things that are out there, they're, they're, they're these death machines, they're, they have no thought, no feeling, nothing, they just, they're just trying to kill you, and you have to accept that, and the thing that was, that was really neat that they showed was that these two kids, how one of them, uh, the younger one, Mika, was just this very kind, innocent, you know, they referred to her as not having a mean bone in her body, and then they also drew some parallels between her and Sophia, uh, obviously Carol's daughter, who she had lost a couple a couple of seasons ago. And Carol, if you remember, in the second episode of this season, was, you know, was asked by their father with his dying breath if she could please take care of them and look after them. So honestly... There was a lot of mystery surrounding things. In my mind, I wasn't sure if Carol was the one that actually killed Karen and David or if she helped cover up for Lizzie doing it because Lizzie was a little bit twisted. But each child has their own mentality and kind of just set of issues and, and morals and everything else that they go into this with. Lizzie is still of the mindset that these these zombies that they're not harmful that these people are just different that they're just they, maybe she feels maybe it's it's that childlike wonderment and amazement with the world where you just you want to believe you know when you're, when you're a kid and you hear about wars and stuff and you're like why can't they just talk about it and just get along and say they're sorry it, it, it sometimes the, the the thought is so simplistic but at the same time it, it's it, it's so true in a lot of different ways and it's so hard to explain to a child that well no you don't understand there's a lot more to it than that so Lizzie, as we see the show progress, we can see that she has a problem with, 
she's she's detached herself a bit from reality in the sense that she believes that these walkers are are people that they're just different they're just changed people that you don't really need to kill them um that they can that they can kind of be tamed they can almost be um they can almost like be your friend you know type of situation so they wind up coming upon it and the episode is named the grove they wind up coming upon this um kind of cabin in the woods so to speak looks like a setting for some kind of you know horror film and, and ultimately that's kind of what this this episode winds up being for me it's just a very dark twisted uh adventure down into the psyche of the human mind and especially of the of, of the children you know and you see as the as the episode progresses um Tyrese so many different times honestly he had this look on his face every time something weird or crazy happened he had this look on his face like oh my god I can't believe I'm with all these crazy white kids right <laughs> and and it, and that's really the only positive that you could draw to this episode because he really did he had this look on his face several different times of like oh my god what am I doing with all these people you know but Tyrese, as the episode progresses, uh, he kind of wants to go and, and he feels like like he's close to these people and like they care about him. And he's felt such devastating loss over the lo uh, over the, the loss of Karen, who he became very attached to, that we find out as the show progresses, um, it weighs more heavily on Carol's mind because he talks about how he has these nightmares every night uh, and he sees her in his dreams and he sees this stranger come up and go and, and kill her it's, and, and he doesn't know who it is and he wakes up every morning every morning he has to deal with feeling that loss again you know and uh, and eventually it winds up coming to that you know Carol does come out and tell him but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit that that she's the one that did it you know and this episode, though, for the entire episode, it was a roller coaster. I had no idea if they were going to kill anybody, who was going to die. At one point, I thought Tyrese might off himself. At one point, I thought Carol may get killed. Um, ultimately, though, like I said, the focus on the two girls was the one that was kind of pure of heart and pure of intention. And the other one that is, is, is a little bit messed up for this world because she seems to think that everything is is okay with these with these zombies, with these walkers, you know. But honestly, <clears throat> as the show went through, I couldn't believe that they, they killed not only one, but two children. Now, I, I know that it was done off camera with both of them. But prior to this, you have to think in the four seasons that we've been in there, the first episode of the season, uh, the, the one kid with the glasses that did the voice of Phineas from Phineas and Ferb, he got sick and he fell down in the showers. And then we know he obviously was zombified and, and died. But that wasn't really, nobody killed him, you know. It was just he got sick and he was coughing, he fell in the shower. And then even with Sophia, she disappeared in the first episode of season two, or season two, and then she appeared to come out of the barn in season or in episode seven. But she was already a zombie. They didn't show her get bit. They didn't show her get mutilated. They didn't show, you know what I mean? They didn't show any of that. So this for me was really, really difficult because of the fact that, um, you know, Carol and Tyrese wind up going out for like to get supplies, maybe check that around in the area. I don't know. They wind up coming back, and of course, they left Lizzie in charge. Uh, and there had been some other incidents as well, um, you know, with where she didn't want to kill walkers. You know, she just had a problem. She was trying to play tag with one of them. I mean, and, and Carol had to go and kill the thing. But it seemed like she was finally starting to get it through her head that, okay, these people are not normal. And then also, Mika, there was a point where she had to go and, and help uh, and save Lizzie and, and Judith from this walker that came over. And even though she didn't want to harm anybody, she didn't want to kill anybody, she did. She rose to the occasion, and she, she was able to pull the trigger. So it was the development of that. And then, of course, too, with uh, the talks between Carol and, uh, and and Mika that really made you feel like Carol really loved these kids, but especially uh, this girl, Mika, because it reminded her so much of her own daughter. And um, But also, she understands that, that good, Carol is, is hard. She's hardened her heart enough to understand that people are not long for this world if they don't go and take the attitude of, you know what, sometimes it is kill or be killed. Sometimes it's I just have to do something and I have to go to that dark place and do it, you know. But when, when her and Tyrese, Carol and Tyrese come back, um, I mean, it is just gut-wrenching. You see this scene played out, and uh, Lizzie is standing there, and they, they, they pan the camera down. They take a shot of her right hand, and she's got a, a knife that's got blood on the end of it. And then they show her left hand, and her left hand is covered in blood. And then they go, and they pan a little bit back out and kind of at her feet, and you see that laying down behind her is her sister, Mika. She, she killed her. Uh, I don't know if she stabbed her to death, slit her wrist. I don't know if Mika wound up fighting back. And in Lizzie's mind, she's over here and she's going, I had to do it. I had to do it. This is her sister who she loves and who she believes is this kind, pure, pure of heart person. And she's trying to prove to everybody in her own twisted way that, yes, I, I, I killed her. I killed her from this world, but we're going to wait for her. She's going to come back and she's not going to want to hurt me because she's my sister. I can, I can tell you, she, she can feel, you can, you just don't understand these things, you know? And although it was very twisted in her mind, that was completely the same thing to do. 
And then you go and you see over on a blanket next to her the baby, the little toddler, Judith, a few months old, right? And she's like, oh, and I was about to take care of her and this and that. So Carol goes and calmly diffuses the whole situation. She winds up going and getting Lizzie to go and give her the gun that she had because Lizzie pulled out a gun and everything else. And she tells Tyrese, uh, Tyrese is just going to take you and I'm going to tie up your sister out here for when she comes back. And she's kind of going along with, with what, because she, she knows that this girl has gone off the, the rails on the crazy train, right? And she's like, Tyrese is going to take Judith and you're going to go with and you guys are going to go in the house, get cleaned up and stuff, and then we'll come check on her later. And I mean, this was just gut-wrenching. I mean, I, I can hardly even talk doing this right now. I'm getting so choked up because... Man, I, I have three kids, and and I've I've even when I didn't have three kids, I'm the oldest of six kids. I've had younger brothers and sisters. I've always uh, been close with them. So I'm grow I don't know if even a stranger's kid, I could I, I you know what I mean? It, God, this is just so it was so powerful, but um, man, just gut wrenching at the same time too. So you see this scene played out, and then later on uh, in the evening, you know, Tyrese is sitting down to talk to Carol, and uh, and he's like, you know, I, I made sure she didn't have any knives or anything like that. She's she's in her room right now, you know, or she's locked in her room or whatever, right there. Because now they now they know she's a danger. She cannot, she's not long for this world in, in any sense. And they know that if they keep that if she's around, she's going to try to kill Judith, uh, the baby, thinking that she's doing the right thing, and. It's such a tough thing because, like I said, I mean, just having kids yourself and then thinking into the, the psyche of, of, a, of a child that's been traumatized by something like this world uh, it must do. I mean, and this has been about a year and a half since uh, the outbreak and everything else. And I mean, you just, God, you just, you feel for them. And uh, I just, and Carol and Tyrese not even being their biological parents, to go and sit down and have to have the talk that they had, for me, it was uncomfortable just to watch. They suggested maybe splitting up, but then how would that work out if Carol wound up going with Lizzie? You know, because because Carol kept stating she's like she can't be around people. She can't be around people. Okay, and Tyrese is like thinking, you know, I don't want to split up. Obviously, strength in numbers. I mean, for at one point though, Tyrese actually just wanted to kind of stay there and make a family. You know, and I felt for him too because he just felt like close to them and thought, hey, you know what? We can just hold up here and make it. We don't even know if this terminus is legit, if it's real. We don't know if it's still there. We don't know if anybody else from the prison, because you got to remember, everybody just assumes everybody else is dead until they find out otherwise, you know? And uh, so they have this conversation. And honestly, I was thinking in my head, I was like, okay, well, just just leave her in the middle of the night, you know? And, and then I was thinking, no, God, you know, I'm a freaking parent. How could I even say that? That's wrong. You can't just leave somebody in the middle of the night, even though she is twisted, she needs help. It's the post-apocalypse, though, so we're not going to be able to get her medicated and get her to see a psychologist or a shrink. We don't have, we can't put her in a rubber room, you know. And um, so, anyways, uh, you know, they have this conversation. You don't really know how things are going to turn out. And like I said, there was uh, several points where I didn't know who was going to die, who was going to live. Um, I, I felt like Lizzie was pretty twisted because you got to remember that she went and she tried to suffocate the baby a few episodes back. She really is just mentally off the rails, man. You know. And so anyway, the next day, um, Carol goes in and takes her outside. And this is even more, even more gut wrenching, um, scene. She takes her outside and the girl's talking to her and she's like, and I'm so sorry that I did it, but she just doesn't get what she did wrong. She still doesn't get it like that. It was wrong that I killed my younger sister. You know what I mean? She's, she's apologizing for all this other stupid shit. Like, I'm sorry for pointing a gun at you and everything else and all the things that she shouldn't be sorry for. It's like, listen, whatever, that's fine. That's water under the bridge. You killed your sister. And you think that zombies are like your friends and, and, and pets and that they're okay, you know, and you can play tag with them. And uh, anyway, this thing that when, when Lizzie needs to calm down and they actually went back to it, uh, it was neat because when her father first died, Back in the second episode of the season, um, Lizzie went outside and was like freaking out and like hyperventilating and everything. And her sister, Mika, as well as Carol, at two different points told her, just look at the flowers, Lizzie. It's okay, honey. Just look at the flowers. It's kind of a calming effect. Just focus on something and breathe, calm down, you know. So there was a point earlier in the, in the episode where same thing and Mika told her, just look at the flowers, Lizzie. Look at the flowers. So Carol goes out there and... and Lizzie's going and walking and walks a little bit ahead of her and she says, just look at the flowers, hon. Just look at the flowers. And, uh, and Carol goes and pulls out her gun, you know, and I'm thinking, oh my God, no, are you really going to go and, and are you really going to shoot this girl, you know? And as she goes to raise the gun and her hand is shaking, you know, and then I thought maybe Carol's just going to kill herself. You know, Carol was tasked with watching these kids and, and she might feel like between that and Sophia, the loss of her, I was thinking that maybe she was just going to end her own existence. Right. And, um, Anyway, they, they do it off camera, obviously, but I mean, when she raises her, her arm and then fires the gun and then they show the graves later on that they're digging and everything, I was just, 
my, my heart was just breaking because I thought about it in my mind and I thought, God, you know, and I compared it to having kids myself or, or again, even if it was just, you know, somebody that was put, I was put in charge of, you know, a friend's kid or a cousin or something. How can you ever make that decision to be judge, jury, and executioner? And it, it's so funny because I always think when I see somebody that did something terrible on TV, you know, yeah, I would kill that guy because he did this or he did that. He hurt this person. He raped this person. He hurt this child, you know. And and you can say that, but at the same time, you know, when you look at, at this whole episode and how this girl was portrayed and played out, on one hand, you were like, yeah, she's a little psycho. But on the other hand, you're like, she's a freaking kid, man, you know, and... I don't know if that gives it a pass, you know what I mean? Because just because she's psycho and well, she's a kid too, you know, should we, should we just offer? I, God, I don't even know what to think about with this. I just know that it was very difficult. And I think too, that Carol is one of those people that she's now in the mindset of, she was a victim in season one. She was uh, almost non-existent in season two, grieving mother. Uh, season three, you know, she was relegated to kind of just a background character. In season four, they've brought her in as this mentally stronger person, this person who's adapted to this world and who does what needs to be done when it needs to be done, you know, case in point with, with Karen and David and killing them. And then, of course, I don't think Tyrese could have done it. I think Tyrese acts big and bad, but I think ultimately he's got a heart of gold, and I think that he couldn't do it. And he's watching from the window when this all happens, you know. And uh, that's obviously what they silently kind of agreed on the night before. But, I mean, she puts her down, and, I mean, I, I was I was in tears, man, you know. Um, so tough. I couldn't even watch the episode again, <clears throat> which I usually try to do before I, I get into a review so I can pick up all the little points, you know. But, my God. And then after that, him, uh, Tyrese and Carol are sitting in uh, in this lonely house now. It's all quiet because the baby's sleeping. And these two children that were vibrant and full of life just a day before are now both dead, right? One by their hand, one by the hand of the others of the sister. And Carol sits down <clears throat> and she goes and puts the gun across the table to Tyrese. And she says, I'm the one that killed Karen and David. There was a few times in the episode where she was going to tell him, I think, or she felt like, I felt like she was going to, um, but she wound up, because uh, he was talking about the, the haunt, the, the people that are dead, they haunt us in our dreams, and she's like, maybe they're not haunting us, they're just warning us, trying to make us better, smarter for this world, you know. She finally comes out and tells him, and she doesn't make any excuses for it, she just says they were sick, and that's what I thought was the right thing to do. And Tyrese puts his hand on the gun, and I mean, he's the table shaking, because he's just so enraged, I guess, you know. And at one point, I thought Tyrese was just going to pull the gun out and shoot himself. Because think about it. He thinks that his sister's dead. His girlfriend that he cared about, obviously, very much, is dead. These two kids, he just saw this horrific thing happen. He hardly even knows Carol, right? I thought he was going to pull the gun out and just blow his freaking brains out. I never once thought that he was actually going to kill Carol. But it was really neat to see how the whole thing progressed. Because at the end, he goes and he says, I forgive you. You know, and I thought that was great the way that it was done. You know, he said, I, I forgive you, you know, and uh, anyway, they wind up going and taking the baby, packing their stuff up and the, and the episode ends with them kind of walking off and we assume, you know, presume that they're now going to Terminus uh, minus these two kids. And I just, I, I, I don't, it was gut wrenching, it was heart wrenching, it was so dark. And I just, and then the whole time too, it was, it was neat to see how these events run parallel to each other. While they were at this cabin, they kept seeing this big fire burning in the distance over a day or two. And then eventually they saw white smoke, which signified that the fire had finally started to go out, you know. And uh, and, and I can only assume that that was from when Daryl and Beth <clears throat> wound up, you know, burning down that uh, that place with the, the moonshine still or whatever, the little cabin, the little shack. So you, you assume that they're maybe in the same area. I, I But God, man, this was a, it was a powerful one and it was really difficult. And I apologize, this was a little bit longer than usual, but this was a um, it was a very moving, um, very touching in a lot of ways episode, but also very dark. And I think a lot of people are going to be sick to their stomach over what happened because uh, I, I didn't think in a million years that in this episode that at the end of it they were going to go and kill two children, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, my, my episode question for you guys, because now obviously we see that it looks like, you know, in the next couple episodes, hopefully we're going to, uh, maybe groups aren't going to get back together, but hopefully we're going to get back to a point where we're going to see a little more of everybody. I think that they've kind of done, so they're, they're finished with this, with only two episodes left in the season, I'm assuming they're finished with this kind of one shot type of stuff uh, where they only show one group, you know, and um, and it looks like ne next week they're going to show some more with uh, for certainly Daryl's group, I believe Glenn's group as well. And, uh, and we haven't seen, of course, Rick and, and Michonne and, uh, and Carl in almost a month, so uh, hopefully them as well. But uh, episode question for you, brothers and sisters, is if you had to make an impossible decision like that, what would your choice be? Whether it was your own child, whether it was somebody else's child, because I put myself in the shoes of them and I say, 
I mean, God, even if it was, especially if it was my own child that was just completely off. The, but if, if that person was a danger to my other children, what, what would I do? Would I, would I, would I split off and, and take him so he'd be okay? Um, and just try to keep him contained. Would I do something? I, I don't, it's an impossible decision. Uh, but I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, Nation. If you'd like to see and hear more about what I'm doing, remember to follow me over on Facebook and Twitter as well.